played in this event. I'm sorry. Could you give me your name? I'm, I'm sorry. Brad Bell. I'm okay. With, and you uh, want to speak to President Gibraltar? I'm, I'm just so we can get everyone to the microphone for each one of these questions. Um, was that? Um, Whoever would like to step up there. I'll step up and take that one. We can't speak to the current investigation. This is a homicide investigation. It's being actively investigated by our C3I unit here in Allegheny County, which is a collaborative effort of detectives from all of the partner agencies. And I can't speak to the specific question as it relates to this current investigation. When and if that information becomes available, we will certainly share it. But let me say this. If you look at national statistics, in my 30-year career in law enforcement, I will say that alcohol is often involved in crimes and incidents of violence, and I think that the statistics would bear that out. The, the uh, witnesses in this case uh, told police that there had been a party at this house the previous night, and people came back again on Saturday night after being there. Friday night, people were being charged admission at the door to come into a very crowded house. Tell us about the extent to which that sort of event is, is monitored and, and, and that you're aware of that and that those kinds of events are a concern. Okay, again, not, not speaking to the specific um, incident from this weekend. And one of the things that we do in our law enforcement partnerships is share intelligence. And some of that intelligence involves repeated calls to particular residences, typically in Frostburg City. We then develop strategies around that. One of the strategies that we use is, and because I come at it from a proactive standpoint, um, let's prevent things from happening rather than having to respond to them. Um, much better to not have something happen than to have to clean it up later. One of the things that we do if we identify a house that's a problem, a team will go there, a member of my staff or myself, a member of Frostburg City Police uh, or the chief out there, the code inspector, the fire marshal's office, and we'll go to these houses on the front end during the day, we'll meet with the residents that live there, um, some of whom are students, and we basically tell them, you are on law enforcement radar, we have been here several times, here are the rules, here's what you need to know. Your behavior out in the city will be considered a violation of Frostburg State University's Code of Conduct in the event that you find yourself receiving a citation, you find yourself in trouble. I, I tell kids this, they, many times they will ask me, well, we want to have a party here. How, how can we do that without getting in trouble? I give them the grandmother rule. I tell them if what you're doing in your house, you would be comfortable doing with your grandparents living next door, and I use grandparents because if I tell them parents, they glaze over. If you're comfortable doing this with your grandparents living next door, then you're probably going to be okay. Um, I hope that answers your question. Was this house on, the, on your radar? To the best of my recollection, it was not on our most recent um, list of houses that needed to be visited. How many is on that list? Uh, Half a dozen, maybe. We've had some students, as we were talking to students on the campus, say that they are attending more off-campus parties, primarily due to a lack of events on campus. Can the university speak to that? Do you that's the truth when it comes to these kinds of parties and students getting I that is just not true. I think that um, I know that the amount of activities on and events on this campus is so plentiful, are so plentiful that at times it's hard for people to decide on any particular day or evening what it is they're going to do. This new Lane Center has been designed specifically to provide students with a venue for um, whether it be hanging out in our game room, playing pool, playing ping pong, um, or uh, movies, activities, or events. Uh, and that's, that doesn't include the academic activities and events that go on on campus and also the athletic events that go on on and around campus. So I, I think on some level, because when I was a student in the 1970s, there was also an enormous amount to do on my university campus, but you always heard from students, there's nothing ever to do around here. I think it's just, it's just, and, and we even asked students what we, what they want us to create for them. 
And, and, and we really try to do that in, in every way possible. But, you know, we have heard from students when it comes to the off-campus parties that there's a much greater effort for students to watch out for each other, that the parties tend to be smaller, that they tend to be uh, a lot more in control than they were seven, eight years ago, and, and, we're, and we're happy about that. Are we, are we happy that there are off-campus parties? No, but um, to the best of our ability, we try to educate students about the dangers that are present before them when they put themselves into a situation like that uh, under the influence of alcohol. So if I have a message for students, you know, uh, really think about the situation that you put yourself in and, and, and remember that there were choices that you, that you make. And, and I would hope that you would choose to participate in the many activities and events on this university campus and avoid situations that, that while not always, but on occasion, could become dangerous. Were there previous incidents involving the student? I didn't hear your question. Were there previous incidents involving the student who's the suspect in this case? I really, uh, it's an ongoing investigation, and I really can't comment on that. Have yes. you spoken to either, Peter Herman from the Baltimore side, have yes. you spoken to either the parents of the suspect or the parents of the victim, and if so, what did you say? Dr. Bowling has... I have, have not yet spoken to the um, parents of the accused. I, um, after receiving a call from Chief Smith early on Sunday, I went down to the hospital um, and uh, where about 20 of our students were in the, in the waiting room. And... Kara McCoy, I arrived about an hour, I would guess, before Kara McCoy, uh, Courtney's mother, arrived at the hospital. And there's, there are no adequate words uh, other than to express my profound sympathy for her loss. What struck me, and what I've shared with, with many, is that in the midst of her own uh, unspeakable grief after just receiving the news that, that is the most devastating news that any parent can receive. What she was focused on was providing comfort to the friends of, of her daughter. She went to each and every student individually that was in that waiting room and gave each of them a hug and, and, and let them know uh, what, had, what had happened. Um, of course, after a while, she did not need to do anything other than provide that hug. Um, but I, we also have concerns about what uh, Shanae's parents must be going through. And uh, it's my understanding that they will be visiting the campus and we're certainly willing to meet with them, but have not done so yet. President Gibraltar, uh, Scott from Channel 9 down in Washington, you mentioned uh, Binge drinking figures, it suggests to me there may be some demonstrable figures we could report. Do you have some numbers you could uh, uh, give us examples, please? Yeah, um, uh, the fact is that about last year, approximately 1,825 college students in the United States died from binge drinking. Um, the, the statistics, if you add to it, Violence, assault, and sexual assault exponentially increase. Our efforts have been to educate our students, beginning when they come here for open houses, when they're considering coming to Frostburg. We talk with parents and students during our um, <coughs> orientation program during the summers. Um, we make it a mandatory part of our freshman orientation program that students have to take a course called Alcohol EDU, and at this point in time, Alcohol EDU is the only known nationally normed online course that has been shown to have a significant impact and reduce binge drinking. Uh, at Frostburg State, we have reduced our binge drinking rate over the past six years by... 25%? Mm -hmm. 
about 25 percent. We have, we have actually brought the number down to what is the national average. Our goal now through the uh, Dartmouth, uh, learn, the, the Dartmouth um, collaborative that we are a member of is that we will reduce our binge drinking rate by another 25 percent over the next couple of years. Is this measured by surveys uh, yes. among students? core survey that we provide to our students and also through surveys that they all respond to in Alcohol EDU. We have evidence through Alcohol EDU that our students' pre-course intentions and their post-course behavior changes dramatically. That students are, that our students, when they do drink, they drink less. That they have a better understanding of their behavior um, um, under the influence of alcohol. And, 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 you know, we really have found alcohol EDU to be a very effective methodology for us. Chief, could you provide us some numbers, uh, for instance, on citations uh, uh, on off-campus homes uh, through the partnerships you mentioned, or any other, uh, any other numbers that are going to help us illustrate that there's something occurring? Not off the top of my head. I will also say that those, um, this is where those, that, that ugly J word comes in, those jurisdictional issues come in. Um, to a certain extent, some of those statistics are not mine to release. I am certainly willing to try to facilitate with Frostburg City Police the release of some of those, some of that information. Um, I think we, I'm going to ask Dr. Ketterman if we would be able to provide you with, through his shop, some of those numbers. Well, and, I think some, and I'm not some sure of the appropriate ones might be evictions based on code violations, uh, uh, off-campus arrests of students and what occurs to them on campus afterwards. I really don't know. If you're arrested off campus and receive a, a charge, what occurs to you on campus? I'm going to punt that one to Dr. Ketterman. That's his shop. <coughs> so whether an incident occurs on campus or off campus, if it involves alcohol, our first step is to educate students. Uh, we do that through an online program. Uh, we do a brief assessment with them. If we see the student is at risk, we refer them to our counseling center for a program. Um, if there is a second incident, again, whether it's on campus or off campus, the student is put on probation. That if there is another violation, they are looking at suspension from the university. And then if there is a third violation, the student is then suspended from the university. How, many, how often does that happen in a year? You know, I don't, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. Can, you, can we get uh, information about whether, even as your binge drinking numbers have declined, what's happening to the numbers of, of uh, that you get indicate violent uh, behavior? Is that also declined to the same extent? Has it been affected at all? Is there a correlation? I don't, I don't think there is a correlation at this point. Uh, you know, the, the majority, I, I can say that the majority of alcohol violations we deal with are minor incidents and that the student learns as a result of that incident and we don't see them again in our, in our student conduct process. Dr. Gibraltar, what do you say to the comments that have been made that the change in academic requirements may be correlated to a rise in violence? I am not quite sure I fully understand the question, Amanda. Um, you know, we are increasing our academic selectivity uh, for students coming to Frostburg State University, and um, I don't really believe that there is a correlation between academic selectivity and student behavior, um, you know, go to Dartmouth, go to Harvard, go to Yale, uh, where students are coming in with SATs in the 13 and 1400s with the top, and, and they're the top performing students in their, in their high schools, and you're still going to find violence and behavioral issues, um, some related to alcohol and some not. So I, I, I really don't think there is a correlation. Are there any other questions? Thank you all very much for Thank coming. Thank you very much. Thank you.